Welcome to this Algebra 2 session on monomials and polynomials. So what we're doing is determining the domain restrictions of rational expressions and simplifying rational expressions. So by definition, a rational expression is a ratio of polynomials in which the denominator is non-zero. And we've talked many times in the past about not having zero in the denominator of a fraction because we can't do that division. So when we're doing these problems, um, we need to list the, the domain restriction as well as the simplified answer. So if we look at this first one, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways that you can go about simplifying it. Um, I'm going to split it into different fractions here. The number is 5 divided by 25, x to the 4th divided by x, and y to the 6th divided by y to the 8th. So you can write the variables out and cancel things, or you can use the properties that we've discussed in the past for the variables. When you're dividing two variables, you do subtract the exponents. So if we first look at the number here, 5 over 25, that 5 can be divided by 5 and we get a 1, and 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. x to the 4th over x to the 3rd, if we, I'm going to write it down here, if we subtract exponents, we get x to the third. And y to the sixth divided by y to the eighth, if we subtract exponents, we get y to the negative two. So as we've learned in the past as well, you cannot have a negative exponent in your final answer. So we have said that you create a fraction and you move that variable and negative exponent to the denominator to make it positive. So I'm going to rewrite my variables here as fractions. So it'll be x to the third over 1 times y to the negative 2 over 1. And as we said, we'll move this to the denominator of this fraction to make it positive. So that'll give us 1 fifth times x to the third over 1 times 1 over y squared. So if I finish multiplying my numerators here, 1 times x to the third times 1 is x to the third. On the bottom, 5 times 1 times y squared is 5y squared. So my final answer then in simplified form is, I kind of ran out of room here, I'm going to write it to the side, x to the third over 5y squared is my simplified answer. Now, we are not finished because, as I stated before, we do need to give the domain restrictions. That means we want to look at the, do the denominator and decide what values of x and y would make this denominator zero. Well, when it's a product like this, it's pretty easy and quick to tell. If x were zero, the denominator would be zero. If y were zero, 25 times x, or whatever the number is, times zero to the eighth would be zero. So our domain restrictions here are that x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. So this is my final answer with the domain restrictions. Now notice that I went to the original equation rather than looking at just my final answer. You should go to the original equation that you started with or expression or polynomial that you started with um, to see what will make that denominator zero. So you want to go back to the original expression, the original rational expression, and check to see um, what will make that denominator zero. So if you only look at the denominator of your final answer, you'll be missing part of the restriction. So make sure you go back to the original. Let's look at another one. We're going to simplify this one and give the domain restrictions. On our last problem in the numerator, we had a monomial, and in the denominator, we had a monomial. So there wasn't a lot to do except for um, cancel things that we could or simplify it. Um, if you have a plus or a minus in the numerator or the denominator, that means that you need to actually see if anything can be factored before you do any simplifying. So we want to look at um, our numerator and our, and our denominator and see if it can be factored at all. So remember when factoring, we always look for a greatest common factor first. 
And in this numerator, the greatest common factor is 7x squared. And I'm not going to go into much detail on the factoring because we did that a lot in the last uh, unit. So we factor out a 7x squared and that gives us 3x minus 5. And in the denominator, I have 7x. So now I can work on canceling things. The 7's will cancel. And x squared and x will cancel, leaving me with a 1 on the bottom and an x in the numerator. And just really quickly to show you why that is over here on the side, x squared over x, x squared is x times x. And you have an x in the denominator. So if you cancel, you can cancel a pair of x's and you're left with a single x. Then, so uh, what we have left is x times 3x minus 5. And depending on how they show the answers, um, they may want you to distribute the x through the parentheses, which would give us 3x squared minus 5x. Now, to do my restriction, again, I go back to my original problem. And I want to know when 7x will be equal to 0. So 7x equal to 0, if I divide both sides by 7, I can see that x will, the denominator will be 0 when x is 0. So when I write my restriction here, it's going to be x cannot equal 0. So this is my final answer with the restriction. And next, simplify and give the domain restrictions for x squared plus 6x minus 7 divided by x squared minus 9x plus 8. Um, the temptation here is to take the x squareds and cancel them, take the x's and cancel them, um, but we can't do that because of the plus and the minus that are tying these terms together. Um, if you had a problem, just really quickly here, um, unrelated to this, but to show you the canceling end of it, if we were to take 1 plus 4 divided by 1 plus 9, we would never cancel the 1 because that would completely change our problem. We would add the 1 and the 4, then add the 1 and the 9, and then do our simplifying, and we'd get 1 half. But here, if we cancel the 1's out, you'd see that we would get 4 ninths. So it's very important that you don't cancel, just cross these x squareds out and the x's and, and come up with, with a number as your final answer. So what you need to do, as I said, when there's plus or minus, look at factoring, if you can. So we can factor this into x's and factors of negative 7 that add together to give us a 6 are a positive 7 and a minus 1. And on the bottom, factors of 8 that can be added together to give us negative 9 are a minus 1 or a negative 1 and a minus 8. So now we look at canceling what, what we have in common in the numerator and the denominator. This whole quantity can be canceled with this whole quantity. So I can cancel quantities and I get x plus 7 over x minus 8 as my simplified answer. Now again, for your restrictions, we're looking at when does my denominator equal 0? Well, it's pretty hard to look at x squared minus 9x plus 8 and see when the denominator is going to be 0. So what we can do, though, is we can factor it as we did before. We already factored it once. And then we'll use the zero product property that we talked about in the last unit. And we'll set each of these equal to 0 and solve for x. So when x is 8, I get a denominator of 0. And when x is 1, I get a denominator of 0. So my restrictions here are x cannot equal 8 
and x cannot equal 1. And that's my final answer with the restrictions. Last but not least, x squared minus 2x minus 24 over x plus 4. This is a trinomial that I can factor, so I need to do that. It'll factor into um, x minus 6 and x plus 4. Factors of negative 24 that I can add together to give me negative 2 are the minus 6 and the plus 4. So again, I have quantities that I can cancel, which are the x plus 4 and the x plus 4. So that gives me x minus 6 as my final answer. And then to finish the problem, I look at my denominator for the restrictions. I want to know when x plus 4 equals 0. So subtract 4 from both sides and you get when x is equal to negative 4. So my restriction here is x cannot equal negative 4. And that ends this session on rational expressions.